the feast of St. Stephen, the first martyr, the proto-martyr, the very first martyr that died for our faith, uh, only a few days or weeks after the day of Pentecost, after the Catholic Church was born. He was one of the seven deacons, and the first one to die because he preached Christ, the first one to die because he saw Christ and believed in Christ. And so this child is born on December the 25th, just born yesterday, our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's born, God is coming to the world. And the very first feast that we celebrate after his coming equals the feast of St. Stephen. And this is to remind us of the mystery, of one of the mysteries of Christ's coming. And that is, our Lord Jesus Christ is God. Our Lord Jesus Christ is infinitely good and wonderful. He has made everything in this world absolutely perfect. We read in the third Mass of Christmas last night. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. And all things were made through Him, without Him was made nothing that has been made. What we read in every Mass of the last Gospel. Everything came from Him, and He is wonderful and good. Also, Adam decided to commit a sin, and to turn away from God. And He brought death into the world, and He brought misery into the world, Adam did. In order to give hope, God said to Adam and to Eve, You did bring death and misery into the world. However, there will come a Redeemer. So when we learn about these truths, and He is going to bring all things to peace, and He is going to heal the wounds of all hearts who wish to be healed, and He is going to bring salvation to the world. All this is wonderful. So therefore, what's the most natural thing to consider? When Jesus Christ comes, when God the Son finally becomes man, everybody is going to be happy. Everybody is going to accept them, except for a few really wicked people. But the vast majority of people, everybody, as in 90, 90%, at least 90% of people, only the few very wicked ones will say no to him. And this is the way it should be. It was the very good reasoning that was given to Pilate when he decided what he should do about this man, 33 years after he had been upon this earth. And he now is going to be put to death, and the crowd wants him put to death. And what did Pilate do? He said, most people are basically good. And most people basically want truth. And they want what's good. And so this man, Jesus Christ, he's so wonderful and he's so good that, you know, I want to save him. And therefore, I'm going to save him by presenting to the people that he, here are your choices. You can choose between Barabbas, who is most terrible and wicked, and everyone hates Barabbas. And you can choose between Jesus Christ, who is not only a, a, the Messiah, not only performed millions of miracles, as in hundreds of thousands of miracles, so many that they cannot be written in all the books of the world, says St. John. Only a few are recorded in our sacred scripture for our instruction. But hundreds of thousands of miracles. And that this man also, you said, you wanted to see him as king. So we are going to say he's the king. And people are basically good. And therefore, they're going to say, we want Jesus Christ to be saved, to not be put to death. And, and let Barabbas be delivered to death. But what did the people say on that day, 33 years after Christ was born, and after he had done such wonderful work throughout his entire time? They said, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. Give us Barabbas. But what shall I do with your king? Let him be crucified. And they said it multiple times. Tole, tole, crucifige eo. Take him away, let him be crucified. And he tried to say, shall I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar. They even called Caesar their king, whom they hated. And what is this mystery? It is a mystery of the iniquity of the heart of man. We must understand that when Jesus Christ, to his infinite goodness, comes into a world such as ours, there will be many souls that reject that goodness simply because it's good. You must understand that there are some people that hate God just because He is God. They hate truth just because it is truth. They hate good just because it is good, and they are not. They're not of God, they're not of truth, and they're not of good. Therefore, they hate good because it is good. They hate true because it is true. They hate God because He is God. 
And it's oftentimes a mistake to say, you only hate God because you think God didn't help you. You only hate God because you think God is bad. You only hate the truth because you don't know what the truth is. I'm going to explain to you how God is good. I'm going to explain to you how the true is true. But many souls will say no anyway. And hence, remember, those who were the first ones to try to kill Jesus Christ were not the pagans, not the Romans, not those who were outside the true religion. The first ones that wanted to bring Jesus Christ to death were his own people. His own disciple betrayed him, and his own priests said he must die, Caiaphas and Annas, whom he made priests, and all the priests of the Old Testament. His own people, which are the, called the people of God, the chosen people from which the Messiah would be taken, the Jews, these people said, let him be crucified. They brought him before Pilate, and Pilate said, I don't really want to crucify him. But he did, in order to save his own position, and for the sake of his own expedient political career. But he didn't want Jesus Christ to die. Now we're 2,000 years later. Have times changed? Has the spirit of man changed? No, it has not. We will discover in our times that it will not so much be the pagans, those outside the true religion. It will not be those that are the enemies of God and belong to false religions who will be the primary cause of our death. And the primary cause of the destruction and the attempt to destruct the killing the followers of Jesus Christ, it shall be the Catholics. Just like it was 2,000 years, our ancestors in the Catholic faith, which is the Jewish religion, they, they were the ones who wished that Jesus Christ be put to death. Just like today, it's the Catholics that want Jesus Christ to be put to death. So that the non-Catholic head of Russia named Putin who is put into power by communists and the enemies of God. He comes to the Holy Father in Rome about four or five or six years ago, seven years ago, and he says to him, I want Russia to be consecrated to the Immaculate Heart as the Lady requested. And the Holy Father, the Caiaphas of our times, says, It shall not be. Times have not changed. So now we arrive at the death of Stephen, the great deacon, the great saint, and his martyrdom would bring about the coming of St. Paul. And here it says, In those days, Stephen, filled with grace and fortitude, had a, had a bright face and with the great signs, and, uh, and, and did great signs and wonders amongst the people. But they, but they indeed of the synagogue rose up, and they called the, the, the Libertines, the Syrians, and the Alexandrians, and all those in Cilicia and Asia, they were disputing with Stephen. So, oh, but these are Jews disputing with Stephen. These aren't pagans disputing with Stephen. These are members of the true religion disputing with Stephen. And they disputed with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the, and the spirit with which he spoke. They couldn't, re they couldn't resist the wisdom and spirit with which St. Stephen, Stephen spoke. And, 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 but, then, but hearing these things... They, 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 were, uh, they, were, they were hurt deeply in their hearts, and, they, and they, 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 they grinded their teeth against him. They ground their teeth against him. And, and, then when, and when Stephen was filled with the Holy Ghost, and looking up to heaven, he saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing in the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right side of God. Now notice when St. Stephen says these words. He didn't say anything negative. It's very important. When Jesus Christ was a little baby, he didn't offend anyone. He didn't preach a single sermon by which anyone could be offended. He didn't even perform a miracle for the, for the wrong person. Like they say that St. Peter denied Christ because our Lord raised his mother-in-law. And therefore St. Peter denied Christ. He cured the wrong person. Well, the fact is, he didn't cure the wrong person. He didn't preach the wrong word. He was just a beautiful little baby. And what happened? Herod said, that beautiful baby must die. And why must he die? Because he's here. Because he's in my land. 
because he's God, because he's king. 33 years later, St. Stephen, all that he does is say, I see the heavens opened. He said, as it says here in the Vulgate of St. Jerome, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing by the right hand of God. Nothing offensive. I just see the heavens open, and I see Jesus Christ standing by the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice, and they stopped up their ears, and they commanded unanimously, they ran up upon him, and then they threw him outside the city so that they might stone him. That's what they did. They, with great unanimity, they stopped their ears. They didn't want to hear goodness. They didn't want to hear truth. You see, there are many people who say, the only reason why people hate the Catholic Church is because it's so negative. The only reason people hate the Catholic Church is because it has too many rules. You can't commit adultery. You can't rob, steal, loot, loot and pillage. You can't worship false gods. All these things offend people. Well, they do offend many people who love to sin. But is this the only thing, or even the primary thing that offends people? No. The very fact that Jesus Christ is God, and that he is good, and that he is king, and that he was born in a stable, and that he died on a cross, all these things are just offensive because of him. And St. Stephen, the first martyr, was put to death without saying anything negative. He didn't preach that like St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist said, Herod, you're committing mortal sin. You're living in adultery. And Herodia didn't like that, so she wanted St. John the Baptist to put to death. She was offended by what St. John the Baptist said. But what did St. Stephen say that was offensive? There's nothing St. Stephen says that is offensive. He defends the truth of the doctrine that was given to him. They cannot, they cannot defeat his arguments. And then he simply says that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is standing on the right side, and they can't tolerate it. And hence the first martyr is going to come. And they stoned him. And then the Lord, and then the Lord but then, and as they stoned him St. Stephen, invoking and saying to the Lord Jesus to receive his spirit. And after this, they cried out with a loud voice, saying, that they, 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 he cried out with a loud voice, saying, O Lord, don't let this sin be given to their charge. May they not be judged for this sin. And when he said this, he fell asleep in the Lord. His last words were, Lord, let not this sin be uh, given to their charge. May they not be judged for the sin that they have committed. And when he said those words, the grace of God entered into Saul of Tarsus, who was there, oh, and who was very much behind the death of St. Stephen. And the sin was not laid to Saul of Tarsus' charge. And Saul of Tarsus was on his way to do evil. And he didn't change his mind that day. But as he went on his way to do evil, that he was knocked off his horse and was made blind. And he became St. Paul, the greatest of all apostles. It all began because Stephen simply said, I have seen the heavens open. And I have seen Jesus Christ standing the right hand side of God. And the power and the light that came from his face and the beauty that came from his voice and from his heart. They could not tolerate his light. They could not tolerate the goodness of his faith. They could not tolerate the beauty and innocence of his heart. And therefore they brought him out to be stoned to death. And many years later, what would St. Paul say? I know a man 14 years ago. Whether in the body or out of the body, I know not. God knows that such a man was taken up to the high heavens, to the third heaven, to see things where it is forbidden for man to see, to hear things forbidden for man to see, of such a man I shall glory. What happened many years later? St. Paul had the same vision that St. Stephen had. It brought St. Stephen to his martyrdom. And it would be the heart that would fill St. Paul, to be able to be the conversion of the Gentiles throughout the entire world. The heart that would make him able to write 14 epistles and travel great journeys that all missionaries try to imitate in some small way the journeys and the spirit of St. Paul. It all started because St. Stephen had a vision of beauty and truth and goodness of God. And there will always be souls that hate beauty, truth, and goodness. There will always be such souls. 
And these souls, there is only one thing to do with them. While they're on this earth, we pray for their repentance. But they can only be sent to judgment. They can only be sent to judgment. Where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. They began to grind their teeth. It says, and they ground their teeth. And they, heard, and they stopped up their ears. Because they don't want to hear the truth proceeding from the mouth of St. Stephen. And they will be in every age. Always men that do not want to hear the truth proceeding from the mouth of the prophets. And there will be prophets in every age. We must be the prophets in our age. There will be prophets in every age. And the prophets speak the truth. And the prophets condemn the lies and condemn the errors. And some will say, they only hate you because you condemn lies. They only hate you because you say negative things. They only hate you because you are so bad in the way you do things. No. As a follower of Jesus Christ, as a minister of our Lord Jesus Christ, Insofar as I am a faithful ministry, minister, I am hated by many souls only because I am a minister and not because of a bad ministry or mistakes in the ministry or perceived mistakes in the ministry. Just because I am called and truly am alter Christus, another Christ. Just because I have the power to make Jesus Christ be present upon the altar, to speak the divine truth that comes from the mouth of God, it doesn't matter what the truth is. They hate truth. They don't care what it is. They don't care what word proceeds from the mouth of God. They hate God. And therefore, every word that proceeds from the mouth, they also hate. There will always be such souls. And these require only the Blessed Virgin Mary. She's the only one that can penetrate some of these hearts and make them come to conversion and repentance. So remember that Jesus Christ came on the earth 2,000 years ago. He was born a beautiful baby. He didn't offend anyone, but they tried to put him to death instantly. And St. Stephen offended no one, but they did put him to death immediately. And all martyrs and would-be martyrs must understand, we are not going to put to death because we offended people. We'll be put to death only because we belong to God. And if we belong to God, we can die in two ways. Either with God, as he wishes us to die, or with God, because the enemies want us to die. In both victories, both deaths are complete victories. And the most beautiful death is the one that is brought about by the so-called by our enemies. Because this is the death that Jesus Christ experienced, the most sacred death of the cross. So in any case, make sure that we live in God, of God, and remember that even though we try everything to make souls understand the goodness of God, the love of God, and we do condemn errors and heresies, but we must understand there will always be souls. The ones brought around the death of St. Stephen and the ones principally responsible for the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. There will always be souls who hate good just because it is good, who hate true just because it is true, and hate God just because he is God. These will only be converted by the miraculous intervention of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and many of them will not be converted, and let them therefore go to judgment and be cursed and damned forever. And they shall be forgotten, and they fail in their hatred and their foolishness. But let us remember, God is in charge of all, and there are some souls that hate him no matter what. So don't worry about trying to be too nice to everyone so that they will have a better view of God. They hate God because he is God, and not because of what he says and does. We bless you all, and in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.